As we all know, pH is critically important not only to coral growth, but health as well as. Yeah, the health of the entire system actually. So everything is going to benefit from a stability, right? So we always talk about that stable is better. So you want to maintain that pH somewhere between 8.2 and 8.4. Exactly, so today we're gonna to talk mostly about stability, but also some ways to increase your pH, starting with a twofer, alkalinity supplements. Yeah, alkalinity is great, and you know, keeping your alkalinity in check and where you're supposed to have it really can, it's one of the primary things that'll keep your, your pH in check, right? So alkalinity is literally the ability of the water to resist changes. So by increasing and keeping your, your alkalinity where you want it, which is in that eight to 12 dKH range, you're gonna, you're gonna reduce the risk of those big pH swings and it increase the uh, stability of your aquarium. So easy ways to add that, you got some things like soda ash, sodium bicarbonate. Exactly, we've also got some Kalkwasser here, which is a really great way not to necessarily raise your alkalinity, but maintain stable alkalinity yep. and pH at the same time. Absolutely. All right, so the next tip to keep your pH up or increase your pH is to improve gas exchange and aeration. Exactly, so low pH is a byproduct of high CO2 in not only the water, but the air as well. Mm -hmm. So we can increase surface agitation with power heads. Uh, we can add a protein skimmer if we don't already have one. Basically, we just wanna increase airflow through the aquarium. Yeah, and sometimes that's as easy as opening a window in your home and allowing some of that fresh air to come in. CO2 scrubbers are a great way to increase pH if you can't open a window like us here in February in Minnesota. Yeah, it's pretty cold here. So during the winter, if you're not able to open a window or you're just not in a position where you have windows close by that you can improve that circulation, having a CO2 scrubber can really help you out. If you can't get your pH out of those high seven, 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 nine range, throwing one of these on the intake of your protein skimmers with some of the CO2 absorbing media can solve your problem, maintain your pH where you want it. Perfect, and actually a tip on this, add a little bit of water in the bottom because the media performs well in humidity. And that brings us to our next tip for raising pH, which is run a refugium with macroalgae. Exactly, so this is one of my favorite ways because it also reduces nutrients, yeah, but as macroalgae absorbs CO2 during photosynthesis, it's going to naturally stabilize your pH. Right, so if anyone has a, a aquarium without a refugium, you're gonna notice those diurnal swings in pH. During the day when the lights are on, there's algae in the aquarium that are pulling CO2 out and you get that nice rise in pH. As soon as the lights go out, that absorption of CO2 stops, pH starts to drop again. You can fix that, add macroalgae to your refugium, make sure it's growing well, it's gonna consistently and offset that. So when your tank lights go off, refugium lights come on and you're gonna constantly have that CO2 uptake. Next is gonna be overfeeding and organic buildup, something that's a little lesser known. Yeah, so any organic matter, or, you know, anything like that that's decaying in your tank during metabolism, it's going to give off CO2. That's gonna lower your pH in your aquarium. So avoid overfeeding, excessive feeding. This can be really challenging in a heavily stocked tank, or if you're trying to maximize coral color and you're just feeding a ton to get that coral to really pop, you really wanna make sure that you've got the filtration to back it up, because those organic compounds in the water getting caught, broken down, are gonna lower your pH. All right, so those have been some common ways to not only increase, but maintain pH. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple more for you. Yeah, so a couple other easy ones you can do. If you don't have a refugium and you wanna have that, uh, that diurnal protection for the pH swings, you could always add an algae turf scrubber. Not necessarily the most space saving solution, but they do work great. I used to use one, never had a problem. Yep, you can also go as far as adding a line from your skimmer air intake to the outside, which is gonna reduce the amount of CO2 that your tank's pulling in. You can, always a caveat to that, you could always bring in pollutants, you know, dust, insecticides, things like that from the outside. Uh, if you are gonna run any type of line like that, or you're gonna use like a CO2 canister, uh, whatever the case may be, you can always put a valve on it so you're not always drawing that. You can just kind of turn it on when you need to, but always an option. Love it about the pesticides, great point. If you're gonna run it to the outside, use a canister with some carbon and maybe some filter floss to prevent yeah. those contaminants. All right, so these have been our tips and tricks to help you maintain a stable pH in your marine aquarium. Exactly, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.